are one of the most distinctive aircraft in the world. The radar dishes on the back of AWACS or Airborne Warning and Control Surveillance aircraft make their purpose clear. NATO AWACS fly regular missions in the skies around Poland and the Baltic states. Pilots steer clear of Russian airspace marked in red on cockpit monitors. Cases of Russian jets flying perilously close to Alliance aircraft keep rising. But the situation hasn't affected NATO's airborne early warning and control force. At 30,000 feet, a single AWACS is able to pinpoint any aircraft or ship at least 250 miles away. Three AWACS can collectively scan NATO's entire European airspace. We can see assets coming our way, uh, not, not, probably not friendly assets coming out, not our, our way, um, uh, at, at a pretty large distance. But the advantage of a radar is that it does not stop at the border. A 360-degree radar picture can be shared instantly with fighter jets or other military users. We are looking for air tracks and also we are looking for ships, so surface tracks. Normally you have two, three circles. Uh, where you circle, it depends uh, what area you have to do your surveillance. And uh, then you switch on your radar and you look for whatever has been tasked. You never know what will happen, but we are prepared. Monitoring screens for up to six hours at a time is a test of concentration. The aircraft themselves are designed to fly for more than 10 hours and be refuelled in mid-air. These planes are sometimes referred to as flying control towers or radar stations in the sky, but they are much more than that. The AWACS are modified 20th century Boeing 707s, but the onboard systems are highly advanced. The so-called Big Eye is also a big brain that can lead up to 150 aircraft. There are no British crew members, and Germans and Americans form most of a multinational team. This pooling of skills has impressed a prospective Royal Air Force pilot. Flying officer George Long is currently attached to a NATO AWACS squadron. I get to see firsthand, up close, how nations work together. And it's just awesome on a personal level and a business level. Everyone gets on well the whole time, work gets done, and that, that's what NATO is doing. Britain has its own AWACS, but not all NATO countries can afford the radar planes. Guy and Kirshen's fleet of 14 Boeing E3As is a result of nations clubbing together. 16 countries jointly fund the aircraft. They're among the few NATO military resources that are not owned by individual member nations. When AWACS crews are not above the clouds, they're brought right back to Earth. At air shows like this one in Estonia, they have a duty to welcome the public aboard. Did you enjoy today? Yes, sir. Good, that's what we like to hear. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you, thank you. All the flying, all the missions, that's great. Uh, but the great thing about the job is actually getting on the ground and meeting the, uh, the local people, uh, the host nations, or where we're going. So that's actually the greatest part of doing a job, is meeting people. NATO is now considering a long-term replacement for its ageing AWACS, but that's still many years away. The existing aircraft are being upgraded, and the plan is to extend their life until 2035. When we're flying with a full crew, we have 120 years of experience. Right now, no unmanned system can do what we can do. When you see our equipment, especially radar, we, we are still one of the most powerful radar stations in, in NATO. Providing that really visible presence um, to the nations who need reassurance most is something we do very, very well, uh, particularly when we work together with the air policing assets that NASA has. Our job has always been there. The importance, you might argue, has changed a little bit. Maybe there's a bit more focus there. The E3A component that's here at Garlingkirchen is a fantastic example of how NATO, when it comes together, can achieve fantastic things, both in providing the force but also in sustaining the capability. The people who are here are a joy to work with. When they get on an aircraft, they don't fly as, na as, as different nations, and you can have upwards of eight, eight or nine different nations on an E3A. They fly as a NATO crew.
Right now we're going uh, into a uh, NATO E3A AWACS. Uh, so uh, this AWACS we fly with a very special decal, uh, 70 years of NATO and all uh, 29 states uh, are yeah, as, a, as, a, as a decal uh, on the skin of the aircraft. We uh, just uh, entered the aircraft from, uh, from, from the end. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the area where you get uh, some uh, hot meals, some, uh, some coffees and tea. We have the, uh, the bunks. Uh, they're not really in use anymore. Uh, we just use them to store the, uh, or to put the, the oxygen uh, on, on the bunks in case something uh, happens, in case of emergency. This is our J compartment, so normally we just store, uh, store our equipment here. Uh, but this is the, uh, the, the radar part, here starts the radar section. So the radar technician sits here on the right side. This part is, uh, is about surveillance and uh, passive controlling. This section is about uh, the tactical director. Uh, so no, here you have two seats for, we use normally two tactical directors. Uh, who are in control of the whole mission crew. So everything that, that happens um, in the, in the back side of the aircraft, um, uh, these uh, two officers uh, uh, control it. This is the, uh, the so-called weapons section. Uh, so if we, if we have to uh, control aircraft, uh, own aircraft, fighter aircraft, fighter bomber aircraft, uh, own assets, so that's done from, from, from this section. It's a flight deck, so we uh, have upgraded the flight deck. So on the left, the left side, uh, it's the uh, it's the aircraft commander. It's the aircraft, aircraft commander seat. On the on the right side, it's the pilot. The, the capability we bring here really is very very good. 